Hey, 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 today we're going to take a look at some uh, dairy information. Uh, so in the old days, I would present this in the classroom and your students would um, take notes, but uh, you obviously don't have to do that. So sit back while I teach you a little bit about dairy products. Okay, here we see two animals. And uh, what are those animals? At first sight, people say, oh, well, they're the cows. But upon closer examination, you might say, hey, this one's got something that this one doesn't. That's right. This is a set of udders. This one doesn't have it. So only one of these is actually a cow. Cows have to have udders, technically. If it doesn't have udders, it's not a cow. Let me give you another example. Have you guys seen this movie? I think it's called Barnyard or something like that. Let's look at a scene. Uh, or let's not look at a scene just yet. Uh, I found this picture on, uh, on the internet and it, it shows um, this cow. Well, he's not a cow at all. He's obviously a man. Let me... Let's take a look at this video here. All right, that is uh, an example of, um, obviously that's a man's voice, um, but he's got udders. You can see right here in the picture, there's udders. Uh, very confusing to kids. Um, essentially, the way it works is cows, let's see, sorry about that. Previous uh, cows are female cattle. Cattle is the species, and when a female has a calf or a baby, she can then give milk. And we humans like to harvest that milk uh, at dairy farms. Females who have not yet had cows or calves, excuse me, are not cows at all. They're called heifers. Some people find that amusing, so I'll say heifer again. Kind of like um, a mom, mommy is a cow, but a young girl is a heifer. And the men, well, if the male of the species is intact, he's called a bull. But if he's not intact, he's called a steer. Now, steers are used for meat, and cows are used for milking, mostly. There are some cows on cattle ranches that uh, raise babies, but mostly cows, as a profession, uh, work at dairies, and they give milk. So... You can see why this is quite confusing. This man has udders. He should not have udders. He utterly should not. He should have something else down there. All right, so answer me this question. Who can give milk? Steers? All cattle? Just cows? Or just heifers? This is a cow. Notice the udders here. And this particular breed of cattle is called a Holstein. And they're very good at uh, making milk for some reason. I don't know if it's because they provide, they make large amounts of milk 
or because their fat content is such. Um, but whatever, for whatever reason, um, it's economically feasible for Holsteins to be used in the dairy industry. These are not cows. There are no udders down here. And these animals are being raised for meat. Now, the breed happens to be Angus. You can tell because they're all black. And um, some of them are steers and some of them are heifers. Uh, but they're not cows. These are cows. They're all lined up to eat, and their job is to make milk. Females who have udders. These are not cows. They're out on the range. They're going to be for beef. No udders here, either steers or heifers. There might be a bull in the field somewhere, but he's generally not used for beef. It's used for breeding purposes. Here we see a dairy farm, and the farm worker is about to put suction devices on the cow's udders. These are cows. These are not cows. They're out on the range. They're eating uh, grass, and they will be used for meat. Now, this baby one right here is probably hangs out close to his mom, which would be a cow. Um, but she's not a dairy cow. She's just a cow that is a mommy cow. These are cows. It's a Jersey cow. And uh, it's interesting because um, these cows are wearing sweaters. The breed is Jersey. And I don't know what Jersey cows have over Holsteins. Um, but uh, some cows are more hardy than others. They like cold weather. Some cows um, do better under certain conditions. Some cows um, provide more milk. Some are, have a number of things going for them. So that's why there's different breeds, kind of like dogs. We have different breeds. Um, some are better for hunting and some are better for uh, uh, police work, et cetera, et cetera. These are not cows either. They're out on the range. They're getting fattened up for the slaughter someday. They're going to be used for beef. Now, they're not Angus. This one, these might be. But these are all Herefords, and that's another beef cattle, um, like the Angus and the Texas Longhorn. Texas Longhorns. Uh, we saw just a couple slides back, are very good uh, at living through harsh conditions, cold weather, poor food. Um, they're very good at that. I don't know if they taste as good as Angus, but they're a very hardy animal. That's the thing about Texas Longhorns. All right, enough about the animals. Let's take a look at what dairy products are. Uh, they include milk, cream, cheese, cultured products, butter, and ice cream, uh, predominantly. There's a few other things, but uh, we're not going to talk about those. Milk is available with varying amounts of fat. First, we have whole milk, and it's about 3.5% fat. At Stater Brothers, it's got the red cap. Some people call this vitamin D milk, which is understandable, because what does it say there? Vitamin D milk. But... As we go to look at some of the other types of milk, you'll find that they're all vitamin D. So this isn't really vitamin D. This is whole milk. Um, and I don't think it says what percentage is on here. It just says milk. If it doesn't say fat reduction or low fat or anything, any reference to fat, then it's just whole milk. Then we have reduced fat milk. At Stater Brothers, it's the blue cap. And it's 2% milk fat. See, notice this is also vitamin D. Well, it's vitamin A and D. Um, as they take more fat out, then they have to add more nutrients because the fats provide nutrients. So we have whole milk at about 3.5% and reduced fat milk at 2%. 
Then they have something called low fat, which is 1% fat. And that is uh, teal or green cap. Uh, why do people like fat in their milk? Well, fat carries flavor. We all like fatty foods because those fats make them tasty. And then there's something called non-fat or fat-free, uh, sometimes called skim milk. And there's 0% fat, and it's got a purple cap over at Stater Brothers. All right, question number two, which of the following is listed correctly from lowest fat to highest? Is it A, non-fat, whole, low-fat? B, whole, reduced fat, non-fat? C, low-fat, whole, non-fat? Or D, skim, low-fat, and whole? Let's talk about cream, not the band, the dairy product. That's kind of a joke there. Cream was Ginger Baker um, and uh, a couple other guys. I don't want to spend time trying to think of their names right now. Okay, cream is basically the milk fats, or pure cream would be pure milk fat. And because it's less dense than the rest of the milk, it floats to the top. Uh, when milk comes out of the cow, uh, and I do mean cow when I say that, uh, it separates. The milk fat floats to the top. And so there's a process that uh, um, go, is, that goes through, that the cream goes through to make it stay mixed up. We'll talk about that in a couple of slides. Um, but anyway, uh, cream is basically... Uh, the fatty portion of milk. Now there's different levels of fat, but it's it's a high fat uh, milk. I guess that's the best definition. Cream is a high fat milk, not just the milk fat because it's not pure, but it is high fat dairy product. There are different types of cream. Each one has a different percent of fat. The amount of fat varies from dairy to dairy, but we'll see there are some guidelines here in the United States. But here we have a 35% whipping cream. Uh, we have a heavy whipping cream and we have half and half and there's light cream too. Here, courtesy of Wikipedia, is a little chart that tells you what the guidelines are for the different types of cream. So half and half, is greater than or equal to 10.5%, but less than 18% fat. People use that in their coffee. Light cream is greater than 18% fat, but less than 30% fat. Whipping cream is greater than 30%, but less than 36 And heavy whipping cream is greater than 36% fat. Manufacturer's cream, which you can't buy in the store, it's only used in commercial applications, it's greater than 40% fat. Here's the horrible truth behind whipped cream. All right, half and half is half milk and half cream, and it's about 12% fat. So if we think about whole milk being about 35 to 4% fat, this is quite a bit more fat, but not near as much fat as cream. All right, question number three. Cream is A, milk fat, B, the leftover byproduct when butter is made, C, milk without fat, or D, whole milk. Butter is cream that has been churned or agitated. Often salt is added for flavor and to preserve freshness. It must have those six letters if it is real, B-U-T-T-E-R. So this is butter, this is butter. Butter, coincidentally, is 80% fat. So it's made out of cream, but through the butter making process, 
two things are made, butter, the higher fat part, and the lower fat, which is buttermilk. So that's why the cream percentage goes up all the way to 80%. I'm sorry, the fat percentage goes up from creams 35, 40%, all the way up to 80% in butter. Question number four, butter is made from A, half and half, B, cream, C, whole milk, or D, buttermilk. There is an artificial butter called margarine. It costs about a fourth of the price. Margarine is made from artificially colored and flavored vegetable oil. Some people think it's healthier. Um, others don't. <laughs> But both margarine and butter are about 80% fat. So margarine might be healthier, I don't know, but it's still about 80%. It's not less fat. It might be a healthier fat. There are different schools of thought on that, but the fat level is about the same, unless it's like a low-fat margarine or something like that. This is butter. See those six letters there? B-U-T-T-E-R. First quality. This is not butter. How do you know? Because it says it's not butter. I can't believe it's not butter. And this is made from 60% vegetable oil spread. So uh, this might be less than 80% fat, but uh, predominantly uh, margarine is the same amount of fat as butter. This is butter. Those six letters right there, butter. I should replace that picture. This is Blue Bonnet. It's not butter. Uh, it's again about 80% fat and it costs about a dollar a pound as compared to four dollars a pound for butter. This is butter too. This is a um, cow that's been molded out of butter. And this is not butter. So um, it's margarine right there. So not, the six letters are not there. Margarine is what it is. And that's what it says. All right. Moving along to homogenization. That's a mechanical process that allows the milk fat to remain mixed throughout the milk. So before, when the milk comes out of the cow, the milk fat floats to the top and it goes through a mechanical process at the dairy to homogenize it. And it looks like that. Notice the little cream globule, globule excuse me, are uniform throughout. So the first class tastes as fatty as the last class. That's what homogenation homogenization does. Uh, just about all the milk you buy in the store is homogenized, unless it, maybe it's raw milk. Sometimes it's not. If you had your own cow or goat and you milk them, uh, you probably wouldn't have homogenized milk, so you would shake it up before serving. Pasteurization is when milk is heat treated to destroy harmful bacteria. So um, either before or after homogenization, um, the milk goes through a pasteurization process and that is, it's heated up. It's either very high temperature for a short period of time or for a low temperature for a little bit longer. And it kills harmful bacteria. Raw milk is not pasteurized and usually not homogenized, although it can be. It depends on the dairy. Uh, the state of California has been trying to outlaw this for a number of years. They say it's not safe, but the dairies that, that make raw milk are extra, extra clean and careful. So the raw milk dairies say it's safe and politicians say it's not. Who knows for sure? 
I want to take a minute and show you uh, some devices I forgot to show you, but I don't want to start over again. So give me a second while I pull these out. Unfortunately, I have these devices right here. One more. No, we're good. Okay. So let me tell you a little bit about this bottle right here. Where did it go? Right here, this bottle. See this strange shape at the top? And that is because back in the day, before my time, milk would come to your home. Now, when I was a kid, we had a milkman that would come and bring milk. So you get up in the morning, go to the front porch, and there would be however many bottles of this that you ordered, one, two, or three, four. Some families would have six glass bottles, and um, it would have milk in it. So you'd get up and you'd put your milk in the refrigerator, um, and then by evening, you would take your empty bottles, leave them out on the porch with a little piece of paper that says, I'd like four quarts for tomorrow, or three quarts, and I'd like some butter, and I'd like some cheddar cheese, or whatever else you wanted uh, from the dairy. And the next day, you'd find that on your front porch. I do remember that when I was very young, uh, when I lived in LA. However, this particular type of bottle is before my time. This is called a cream top bottle. And a few minutes ago, we talked about how cream floats to the top. Well, in this particular bottle, the cream would occupy this area up here. And you could shake it up and then put milk over your cereal. Or maybe you liked a little cream in your coffee. So you use this special spoon, where did it go? Right here, a special spoon. And you dip it in there and pour some cream in your coffee. So it's called a cream, uh, cream top bottle and a cream top spoon for getting that cream out of there. Okay. Then... At the dairy, um, sometimes they would skim off cream because remember we talked about uh, fat-free milk? Well, that cream's got to go somewhere. And the place it goes is to butter making. So this device right here is a butter churn. You put your cream in there and you turn this crank for about 20 or 30 or 40 minutes. You would have butter and buttermilk you pour off the buttermilk see this little mesh right here that's so you can pour off the buttermilk and then what remained inside the jar was actual butter and then you rinse it off add salt to it and you would have butter now back when we were in the classroom we made butter um, ourselves. We used an electric mixer. We didn't use this. But uh, we, I bought cream for everybody, and everybody made butter. But obviously, we can't do that right now. But if you want a fun project, you can make some butter. Um, all you need to do is get some heavy cream and mix it up for a while. I also made it when I was a kid in kindergarten. I have fond memory of making butter. But anyway, and but this right here is obviously not for commercial purposes. This would be like if you lived on a farm or something, you had, you know, a quart or two, maybe three of cream, and you pour them in here, and you crank this, and you would make butter. And then you have to rinse that butter off because it's really susceptible to bacteria growth, and it'll get sour real quick. And some people like sour butter. There's... Definitely uh, purposes for 
using it. Um, it's not called sour butter, it's called cultured butter. But if you want it to be sweet, you rinse this off in cold water and because it's fat, um, it doesn't uh, dissolve in water, but you wanna rinse off all that buttermilk and then you knead in some salt and that salt would help preserve the butter. And it also gives it some flavor too. Now the buttermilk that you would pour off, you could drink it and it's pretty tasty stuff. Or you could let it sit and it would turn sour and that would be like the buttermilk you buy in the stores now. It's called cultured buttermilk because it's got a bacteria, a good bacteria in it that gives it that sour flavor. Um, you can't find sweet buttermilk in the store, but you could make it. Then you take that butter out of the jar and put it in this. This is a butter mold. You pack it in there good and tight, filling up all the holes after you've rinsed it and salted it. And let's see, you push through this and a stick of butter that weighs about a pound would come out. So that's a wooden butter mold. So you push it through like that to get it out. If it didn't have this device pushing on the back, then it would be hard to get it out once you packed it in there. So once you pack it in the mold, you push this out and a pound of butter comes out. Here we have an aluminum one and the shape's a little bit different, but it's the same idea, same device. It's a butter mold. And you pack it full of butter, push this through, and you'd have a round cylinder of butter about a pound worth. Aren't you glad I showed you all those things? I hope so. All right, question number five. What means to heat the milk to kill bacteria? Is that homogenization, pasteurization, churning, or is it curdling? Ripen cheese. That's cheese in which controlled amounts of bacteria, mold, yeast, or enzymes are added and which has been stored at, excuse me, stored at controlled temperatures. Here we have a nice Gouda, string cheese, mozzarella, unless it's fresh mozzarella, you can get fresh mozzarella that's not ripened. Swiss cheese, cheddar, those are all ripened cheeses. Uh, Non-ripened cheeses are examples of like fresh cheese, would be cream cheese or cottage cheese. Processed cheese, now, Mr. Mac doesn't like processed cheese. Uh, my favorite hamburger places are ones that have natural cheese. Not a big fan, never have been. I will eat it if I have to, but if I can avoid it, I would like to. Processed cheese is made from natural cheese that is heated and mixed with additives. American cheese, Cheese Whiz, Velveeta, Nacho cheese sauce are all processed, but you can't have nacho cheese sauce. Why? Because it's nacho cheese. Cultured milk products have good bacteria added. Examples include sour cream, yogurt, buttermilk, the buttermilk you buy in the store, kefir, cream fresh, and ripened cheese. So not all bacteria is bad. Some bacteria is good. Question number six, which of the following is not cultured? A, butter, B, sour cream, C, yogurt, or D, buttermilk? Uh, we talked about this uh, in class this year, um, sweetened condensed milk. What is sweetened condensed milk? Well, sweetened condensed milk is whole milk that has had some of the water removed and a sweetener added. 
It's used almost exclusively in desserts. They do use it for making Thai iced tea, but it's so sweet and so thick, uh, it's very rarely used outside of desserts. It's very sweet. Uh, and this is a bit of trivia. Um, this is a product made by Borden. It's called Eagle Brand Sweet Condensed Milk. And this is a product made by Borden. It's called Magnolia Sweetened Condensed Milk. They're sold side by side on the same shelf in the supermarket. This one costs a little more than this one. They're both sweetened condensed milk. They're both made by Borden, but they're different. I don't know if the price is different or if they actually taste different. Um, this magnolia tends to be more popular in Mexican communities for whatever reason, um, but Eagle is more expensive. So I don't taste a difference, so I always use the magnolia myself. All right, then we have another kind of milk that comes in a can, and you cannot, uh, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? You cannot um, substitute one for the other. This is evaporated milk. Uh, it comes in a can, and it's on the shelf very close to the sweetened condensed milk, but there's no sweetening. And when you open up the can, you'll find that it's darker in color than uh, fresh milk because it's condensed. Um, and it's a little bit thicker than fresh milk, but it's not sweet. And me at my house, I always keep two or three or four cans of this in my pantry because when I come across a recipe that requires milk, I generally don't have it in the refrigerator. Nobody at my house drinks milk. So uh, rather than buy milk and let it go bad, I just keep this in the pantry. And then when it's time to make gravy, uh, I got some milk in the pantry ready to go. And it lasts for years and years and years in the can. So that's evaporated milk. And there's Elsie the cow. This is also made by Borden. Okay, curdling is an important word. It's when milk coagulates or solidifies and forms clumps. So this is some milk that's been, uh, either some acid has been added to it or it's been heated up and it's starting to clump up. And that's the beginnings of cheese. Here we see these curds and we see whey. Who was it, do you guys remember? Who was it that ate her curds and whey? Little Miss Muffet sat on a tuffet eating her curds and whey. That's what she was eating. Basically, uh, it's another way of saying um, cottage cheese. Um, when cheese is made, when actual uh, cheddar cheese is made, they will allow this to sit for a while to make lots of curds and then pour off the whey. And in the old days, the whey was thrown out. Um, but in modern times, they use the whey um, for a number of other products like uh, energy drinks, et cetera, et cetera. Not energy drinks, excuse me. Protein powders and stuff like that for bodybuilding. And it's used in other, as an additive in other foods as well to add protein. Okay, this is something that uh, sometimes stumps a lot of people. So um, you're just going to have to trust me on this because I know some of you aren't going to believe me. This date right here is not the drink by date. It's the sell by date, which means the supermarket needs to get it sold by this day. Now, once it's sold, it can last up to a week, depending on what temperature it's kept. As a matter of fact, if it's frozen, it can be 
it can stay good for months. So this is not the drink by day. This is the sell by date. It's for the supermarket and the buyer to know that it needs to be sold by this day. Once it's home and in your refrigerator, it's good as long as it's good. The nice thing about milk is that when it goes bad, it smells funky and tastes sour. Uh, and it's not going to make you sick. It's just not pleasant to drink. Some people like sour milk. I don't know. I was spent uh, some time in Kenya a few years back, and they love sour milk. Um, but anyway, so this is the sell-by date, not the drink-by date. Milk will last according to how cold it's kept. And if it's kept at 45 degrees, it won't even make it to this day. So if it were transported in a truck and it got warm in the truck, no, it wouldn't even make it to that day. Um, so it's important to keep it as cold as you can, and it'll last a lot longer. But like I say, this is not the drink by date. This is the sell by date. All right, and question number seven. Which canned milk contains added sweeteners? Is it A, evaporated milk, B, sweetened condensed milk, or C, is it all canned milk is sweetened? And there's a Holstein cow. You can see her udders. And that is dairy. Thank you.